Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. I'm gonna go over a very popular topic, uh, power output, and uh, basically how we can improve it through various factors. Um, I could go very deep down the rabbit hole. Um, this is a, a good topic I really, really like to um, study myself. So today we'll talk about motor potential and technical mastery. Um, motor potential is basically the body's ability to apply force. Um, and it can happen due to peripheral factors. Or CNS factors. Now peripheral is things like uh, bone strength, uh, tendon strength, um, increasing cross-sectional area, uh, pronation angle of the muscles, uh, while CNS is more your intramuscular coordination, such as motor unit recruitment, um, rate coding and muscle synchronization, and you also got intramuscular coordination here. Now, basically, we try and increase our motor potential using strength training. So typical strength training would be Things like the repetition method, um, strength method, and dynamic method. And all these things can give us CNS factors and peripheral factors. Um, if we wanted to go deep into it, we could also look at eccentric modalities, isometric modalities, um, we could look at ballistics, which is your jumps, and it's also um, VBT, velocity-based training. So that's jumps and, and Olympic lifting. And basically, all this stuff in the gym tends to be general in nature, but all exercises lie on a continuum of from general to specific. Um, if we're looking at, say, a Bondachuk classification, majority of these exercises would be either GPE or SPE. And if you don't know much about Bondachuk, I highly recommend looking up those uh, classifications. Um, all these exercises here will only transfer so much. So as your training age increases, this transfer to the power output of a specific movement that we're trying to uh, increase our power in, will start getting diminishing returns. Um, then we've got things like technical mastery and this is things like basically it's coordination um, and coordination is essentially the ability to control um, degrees of degrees of freedom and this could be things like uh, fluidity relaxation timing etc Okay, and this is basically training the specific skill of your event. Um, so as I said before, this stuff won't have so much uh, transfer, but you'll get guys like Verkashansky, um, Bondachuk, and even Bosch, who will try and combine these two together. So Verkashansky will use dynamic correspondence. Okay, Dyna dynamic correspondence. And he will say, um, out of those dynamic correspondence, you need three or four of the five um, factors for to essentially link is here. Okay. And then you have Bondachuk. We'll talk about his exercise general classifications. And his would be an SDE, a special developmental exercise, um, which can be a whole or part of the movement. Um, to try and get this this transfer, and then you uh, you have Bosch, and he'll talk about attractors. Okay, so these guys will try and link motor potential, technical mastery, um, by similar ways, but different different ways to think about it. Now, in terms of technical mastery, um, practicing specific skill, uh, and trying to improve the power output that way, um, I like to think. I like Newell's framework where he has the individual, the task, and the environment. 
And basically, these three factors are the way we can um, help uh, motor learning and getting better technical mastery of a specific skill to increase our power output. Um, and you can do this using different cues, such as internal cues, external cues, etc. And one other way we can, when we're trying to uh, get better at a specific skill, is that um, I've heard two different ways of being said. Um, for example, John uh, Kylie talks about, and Stephen Jones talked about this in his recent article, and um, one of my other buddies, Jeff Moyes, talked about it, but they have different ways in, uh, of talking about it. So I've heard said like, imagine this is a forest, okay? And we're trying to get through here to there. Um, if we're just practicing the skill at start, we're gonna form a little path. And if we keep practicing that skill over and over and over, this is gonna be the path through. However, if we provide variability, variability, we, we can make this path thicker. So we practice the skill with variability and we'll make the path thicker, which means the skill is more robust. And um, yeah, which is what we're after. So power output, you have motor potential, you have technical mastery, um, things in the gym, um, and outside of that, plyometrics should, should be in there as well, sorry, uh, as well as technical mastery, and that's what increases power output. Um, obviously, we could go a lot deeper than this, but um, I wanted to give you my thoughts behind it and um, how we can improve it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it.